Well, it seems we have our first Ryzen 5 1600 review, and it looks interesting. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Gamer Meld. I know some of you might be sick of the Ryzen coverage, but every time I go back to working on something gaming or hardware related besides Ryzen, some big news tends to pop up. And the views certainly go up with the Ryzen content, so it seems that's what most of you want. However, if you are sick of the Ryzen videos, just let me know in the comments below. And I'm going to have a poll on Twitter for all of you to vote as well, so let me know over there. Just know that Ryzen is what I mostly talk about because there's honestly a ton coming out on both it and Vega, but more diverse videos are coming. So on to the news. It seems we have our first real Ryzen 5 1600 review from El Chapuz's Informatico. I know I did that bad. Their review is certainly well done, and with the confirmed retailers selling the processors early, it makes sense for a more official publication to get their hands on it without any NDA. They've also got some nice images that seem to confirm it. So let's go over it. First, of course, is their test platform. The motherboard used was the MSI X370 X Power Gaming Titanium. They also used 3600 RAM, but had it running at 2400 because they couldn't get it any higher with the motherboard. With that said, I do think much of the memory boosting performance is slightly overstated. It helps a ton on the games Ryzen performs abnormally bad in, but it certainly seems that Infinity Fabric isn't as much of a bottleneck in gaming as initially thought. With that said, with running the memory at 2400, you can see the latency was quite bad, though better than it was from a previous BIOS. So it's certainly up to the game as to how much it helps. They also used a 1070, which may have slightly held back the differences, but at 1080p, the 1070 shouldn't be a strong bottleneck. Now, let's get into the actual benchmarks. First up, the single core performance is right where you'd expect, and just slightly behind the 1700X. Then in multi-core performance, it does very well in CPU-Z and even beats the 7700K running at 4.9 GHz, while itself was only running at a base clock, or possibly a boost clock, it wasn't extremely clear in the article to be honest. It falls a little short in W-Prime, but once again, the clock speed isn't as high as it can be. It also does really well in Cinebench. Basically, in pure multi-core performance, the 1600 does absolutely fantastic, especially for the price. Moving over to games, what I'm sure many of you are waiting for, there are some unusual results. First, I wanted to point out that they used the 6700K instead of the 7700K, and I couldn't find any reference to the clock speeds any of the processors were running at, so keep that in mind while we go over the results. First up is Battlefield 1 running off DirectX 11. You can see marginal differences between the three chips with the 6700K taking a slight lead. When we move over to DirectX 12, things change. Both the Ryzen CPUs take the lead, which certainly points to the API doing great for Ryzen and more cores, though the difference between Ryzen and Intel in this is minute, to say the least. Next we have Doom running on OpenGL, and it's our first strange result. Why is the 1600 doing better than the 1700X? It seems to boil down to one thing, better optimization. The 1600 benchmarks were done more recently, so optimization has been done in between testing the games with the two chips, as there's simply no reason the 1600 would do better. Next is Doom with the API Vulkan, and not surprisingly, both Ryzen CPUs perform very well. The two not being different in performance, of course, shows 8 cores and 16 threads just aren't being used right now. Next up we have the newest Metro game, and it had the i7 beating out Ryzen by a few FPS while the 1600 and 1700X are tied. Now, Ryzen Tomb Raider and DX11 is another strange one that's certainly due to better optimization from the time the tests were done. This is of course always great to see as it shows AMD is really working hard with these companies to ensure they look at Ryzen. Of course, development from the ground up with it in mind is far better than after the fact. Lastly is Tomb Raider done with DX12 and shows quite a performance difference from Intel to Ryzen. And Total War showing an even bigger gap, though of course that's one of those games that's clearly not well written for Ryzen and could almost certainly benefit from higher frequency RAM. The last bit of test to discuss comes down to overclocking. It is unfortunate, but it's not at much of a surprise as it's running on the same chip as the Ryzen 7 variants, but they could only get it up to 3.9 GHz with 1.3 volts. Now, that certainly isn't bad for a 6 core chip at all, so don't think I'm saying that. But I just don't want people to think they'll be able to overclock, say, the 4 core chips far higher than their 8 core brothers. It really just doesn't appear it'll be the case. But of course, how high you can get is actually dependent on the exact chip you have, but the differences is within small margins. So it's conclusion time. 
I've said it before and I'll say it again. Ryzen is a fantastic chip for professionals and really it's a great chip all around. As far as where it'll land gaming wise in the future is simply not a call I can make right now. If developers fully take advantage of the threads the 1600 has at its disposal and is optimized well for the chip, I have almost no doubt it would beat the 7700K and be the go-to gaming chip, but I just don't know if, or at least, should I say when, that'll happen. If you game and do professional work, you can't go wrong with it. If you only game, you might be better at price to performance with the upcoming Ryzen 1400 or to go with an Intel chip. But if you have high hopes for multi-core processing utilization in upcoming games, the 1600 could end up being fantastic. While that ends today's video, don't forget I've got a giveaway going on until the end of the month, and you have a chance to win one of five gift cards. It's really simple to sign up, just subscribe to the channel and visit the link in the description, and there's plenty of ways to add entries for even a greater chance to win. What's absolutely unbelievable is the fact that I started this giveaway, let's say, four or five days ago. And I started it because I'd reached the 5,000 subscriber mark. Well, this morning I wake up and I've reached the 7,000 subscriber mark in four or five days. It's just, it's unbelievable and I honestly can't thank everyone enough. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming and as always, have a great day.